Hi everyone, welcome to the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen. Well tonight we're pleased to have Terry in the kitchen and Laura in the kitchen doing her dem tonight. But before we do that, let's just say a few hellos. Laura's on comments. Hello. Have you seen it somewhere? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Laura's on comments and Terry is on the camera. Hello. And uh, we're just going to say goodbye to Terry tonight. It's her last one before she goes on maternity leave. So I might get a letter come over here and do a little wiggle in a second. Oh, here she come. Oh, no, wait. Are you coming now to do a wiggle? She's just doing a coat for me. Yeah, so let's have a little wiggle with our little baby. <laughs> yeah, so last night's night, she's still staying with us, working from home, but um, she's going to not travel in now to do the live. So uh, that's Terry on baby duties. Um, so she, I said to her, you know what, shut your mind. I said, no, get as much rest as you can, because once this baby comes, you're going to be awake all night. <laughs> Right then. So what's going new, what's going on new in the kitchen? All right. So last week I said to you that we're going to bring we're going to start doing baking mixes. So we're just going to start up with two for first first, and then we're going to see how they go and we'll start bringing more in. See if you like them. So lots of things are expensive now. Eggs are expensive. Um, butter's expensive. And not only that, it's the convenience as well. So uh, one of the mixes that we've got is, and we do have a winner for this that I can't remember, so I'm going to have to pop it in the group later. Um, Easy Bake Z Zingy lemon, mi lemon Cake Mix, okay? So that's what we've called it. Now this is fantastic. Now with this, you can make from the packet 16 of the cut muffin size um muffins okay so there's not 16 here because i gave them away to the builders at the weekend but they can make 16 of these here okay or you can make six plus a tray bake from the mix which is perfect because claire wants me to decorate a tray bake so i'll put that in the freezer and then that's what we'll be decorating so you can get your tray bake and i think that's 10 by six that is it might be eight by six, I'll measure it afterwards. <laughs> what do you think it is that? No, oh, don't I think it's eight by six, don't know, I'll have a look. So um, <laughs> anyhow, so you can get, get your tray bake and then you've got your cupcakes and this tastes delicious. And I've got to be honest, the girls in the office have been nicking them. And at the weekend, I had um, the tree surgeon here, that's who I had here, and um, him and all his team were here cutting down and they said, have you got any cakes, Carol? I went, just as it happens, I've got some in the freezer, I'll get them out and let them uh, thaw out. So they were really happy with those. So it's going to be £4.25 this mix, okay? It's 500 grams and we've got it on offer for you guys uh, for this week at £3.25, okay? So there's a pound off and it's actually re really very, very reasonable. You do need some eggs with this and you do need some oil. Karen showed you how to make it, um, but you're going to love it going to be just so easy um, and then the other mix that we've got is is our easy chocolatey chocolatey camera was off in the red because she said i know when you go live you won't ever say it so our easy bake chocolatey cake chop cake mix <laughs> chocolate cake mix anyhow basically that's what it is but this one's a different type of recipe now this one only needs water so there's there's no fat you need to add to it so it's fatless it's also very light it's very airy um, and this one makes one tray bake and if you see those muffins gone we've been tasting them and this one makes uh, eight muffins this one does so eight muffins one tray bake or you can make 16 muffins with it maybe a little bit more actually um, the trick with this one is you must mix it for 12 minutes okay so once you've added the water you must mix for 12 minutes so that is on the website so Laura have you got comments coming up there are you up? Yeah, just, so we've got 206 people watching that's what we like and yeah just people saying hello to everybody else so eggs oh, for the lemon water for the chocolate okay but you'll love them you'll love them both so they're on offer three pounds 25 so easy straight in the cupboard somebody's whizzing round to see you bim bam bosh done in the oven in the oven delicious you're going to love those right let's tell you what else is new so the sugar paste but the sugar paste is sold out already can't believe it we ordered loads of it so i just wanted to, sh to, want to show you. these are the one kilo bags so all the orders were dispatched today so if you remember i said that we were going to put them on and then they'll dispatch today and they have actually all gone today as well so we have run out of all the white we've run out of black um 
we've got a little bit of a few other colours, okay. So I've also got my next stitch dispatch on for white, five kilos and two and a half kilos. Um, I'll be dispatching them next Monday. So if you want to add them to the basket, you can. But do remember that your whole order will dispatch together. We won't do two-part dispatch. So anything you put in your basket that's dispatched on such a date, the whole lot goes together. Um, I'm just waiting for the manufacturer to come back to me tomorrow to confirm that he can send um, the colours with it as well. Okay, so we've got the lovely ivory in the gold packets. There we go. We've got red in the red. Sapphire blue in the, uh, navy sapphire, sorry, in the blue. And these are for Claire, so she's going to be really excited to open these up. Uh, Claire wanted the emerald green as well, so we've got to have a bit of green. I always forget to order greens. White, white in silver. And then we've got the black in the black. Okay, so the black, the green, because I didn't know we ordered green, I didn't order any green bags, so I'll get them ordered soon. And um, so there you go. So we've got six colours in the sugar paste. And these are the one kilo bags. Now, I did have these on offer, but they're six ninety nine a kilo, which is really very, very reasonable. And anybody who's used our sugar paste will know how great it is. And basically, just so that you can see things by eye, so I think I've got 250 grams sugar paste. I should have got this one out earlier, shouldn't I? They look really good in those bags, they're easier to find. Oh yeah, spot it straight away, won't you? Yeah. Well basically, most sugar paste is sold um, in 250 gram packs. Um, some companies do the larger pack grams, we're not going to do the smaller packs. But they've all got a zip lock on them, so you can seal them afterwards. Um, they've got a six months uh, lifespan on them, but that's because this sugar paste was made for us. Um, uh, end of last year it was made for us so we've got to get past that six months and then we can test it and then we can then maybe extend the dates um, so I think you're going to love it so if you look at four packets of Renshaw or four packets of 250 gram mixes that's basically what's in here so don't look at it and think oh it's only little packets these are one kilo packets so and I'm sure you're going to love them they're ideal yeah and I have to agree I really like the bright colored packaging do you like them? Yeah, yeah, like them, Laura. Yeah, well, I, where I, you know, the boxes, because I have yeah. bigger boxes, they're all in the blue packaging, yeah. aren't they? So you have to open them, see which ones see what they are, so yeah. It just makes it easier. Um, the question about the cake mixes, yeah. would would one bag make a cake? Would it make a six inch cake? Yes, it would, absolutely. It would make three layers. So make three layers of six inch sponge. Um, obviously you have to work out, they're not gonna be like super deep, but they'll be plenty deep enough, so you'll be fine. And you'll probably get two eight inch sponges out of it as well. So uh, more than plenty. And I'm talking about sandwich tin sizes, yeah? All right then, so what's Laura doing tonight? So Laura is doing whipping it up and we're promoting the shots, okay? So I want to make sure that we're showing you visuals all the time, because I want to make sure that over the years we've been showing you um, products and we, we crack on and we get in and we do the recipe and then we don't always show you exactly what it was that we use because we're that busy joking, having bants and everything else. So I just want to make sure that we're showing you visuals. Um, and if you can hear any noise in the background, it's Harrison. Hi Harrison. <laughs> So he's been making a right racket and he's been sw he's been told he can't make he's any been, sounds. He's been singing. Yeah, he's so, been very good. Yeah. <laughs> he's been singing and kicking the cupboard and everything else that he can do. But he's been told he's got to behave himself. Right, so if you do hear any little noises, it's little pipsqueak over there. So Laura is going to make marshmallows today using uh, the flavour shots and the whipping it up. So not together, two different versions. Uh, the recipe is made very, very similar. So you can buy um, our icing sugars in big bags, okay, which is what you normally buy them in, 500 gram bags. But we are trying to convert people to go over to shots and we're hoping within the next two years we discontinue the big bags and you're all on shots. There's several reasons, really. Weight packaging reduced packaging and also storage space so storage in the cupboard so you know one one two three four five six seven flavors there look how much space that takes okay and then all you need is maybe two packets of icing sugar in the cupboard and then use it as and when you need it so laura what flavor uh icing sugar are you using so 
the whipping it up one I want to use strawberry milkshake. Yeah. And then the flavour shot one, the salted caramel. Right. So if we open up the salted caramel, and I can never pull these things, I'm going to forget a pair of scissors. Right, I don't know why I do it all the time. Hang on a second. I think one side rips easier than the other. Do you? Yeah. yeah. I've tried both sides. I don't, I don't know. I've got a bit weak the these days. <laughs> <laughs> My hand went all funny on the live. <laughs> because it's an old age drink. So what you do is, okay, now for exact measurements, we said that the flavour shots are 50 grams. So we say had it to 450 grams of ice and sugar. And that's because that gives you an exact 500 grams. But you don't buy 450 grams of ice and sugar. You buy a kilo or you buy 500 grams. So rather than faffing about for 50 grams, you can have the whole shot, the whole shot to the ice and sugar and you'll smell it it's absolutely gorgeous it really is nice and strong you'll love it okay and then i'll tell you some other things that you can use it for as well so make sure you get it all out and then just mix it in give it a couple of mixes don't need to turn the mixer on you're just mixing it in making sure that all the flavor goes in the ice and sugar now I know some of you love the bags and we're not moving straight away, but over the next two years we do want to be going down to shop size. Yeah? We'll, right. we'll wean them in. We'll wean in them in. Yes. Mm. All right then. <laughs> there you go. So there you go. That's all you need to do. And then there you go, your, your 500 grams of ice in sugar. A little bit more really, but it, it, for those 50 grams it won't make any difference. And all you do is put this in an airtight container. Um, I've only done it in here just so that you can see it. Put it in an airtight container. Give this a wipe, stick this inside, stick it on the side, wherever you want to do it so that you know what it is. And there you go. And then you've got all your storage space for these here, ready to use when you want to use them. So it's ideal and it's especially great for sending them abroad because at the moment shipping one kilo of icing sugar to Australia, America is £26. So that's just two bags of icing sugar. And that it, we have to make it less than two bags so they can only actually have one bag and something less because you have to think about the box, the invoice and any packaging. So it's crazy. So people can actually have more of these when we're sending them to um, Australia or America and things like that. So also, the longer you leave the flavouring in, the longer it fuses. So if you put it in the day before, gives it just give it a little twist, it fuses a bit quicker. Um, especially if you only want a small amount. If you're going to use the whole 500 grams, I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, in fact, I wouldn't worry about it at all. It's just me being thinking, oh, it's better to leave it to strengthen up. So that's that one. So I've done this in the brown one and I've got salted caramel on there. And then Laura's going to use the strawberry milkshake whipping it up. Now the whipping it up, you know, is a new product that we brought out in 2020. It's a fabulous mix for making Swiss meringue buttercream. It does the same as our, our icing. Um, it makes mousse, meringue, pavlova, shortbread, royal icing. So it makes it exactly the same as this, but you don't need to add the egg element. The egg element is already in there. So we'll do this one as well. Now this is a 70 gram bag and we're adding it to 500 grams of uh, icing sugar. That little bit extra won't make any difference. Cut it on the seal. One second. A question about the icing sugar mm -hmm. in two years' time. Yeah. <laughs> when you're only selling the flavour shops. Yeah. Will you be selling icing sugar, plain icing sugar? I haven't really thought about it. She'll let you know. In you two love years. our icing sugar, don't you? In two years, I'll let you know. <laughs> our icing sugar is so nice because we do blend it. Well, that's what blend people it. are saying. The icing sugar yeah. is, is nice. You know, and some of you, um, you know, some of you. Um, smells really nice um, I know some of you it's going to be hard for you to change over but the world now is all about recycling it's all about making smaller packaging it's all about condensing things down it's, it's just and we're just trying to work with that really and we're trying to save on shipping I'm not saying it's going to be done in two years all of it but we want to try and get rid of it so basically all the big bags that we have we will be reordering them uh, reordering them. We've got thousands and thousands and thousands of bags. I think we've got about £30,000 worth of bags. So we've got a long way to go yet, unless you not go mad and buy them all and start stockpiling, which would be great. Um, so all you do with the whipping it up is do exactly the same as the flavour shop. 
and don't do what I've just done, bail the bag. So I can't put that in the I can't put that in there now. Okay, we'll have to sell the tape it to the side. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't thinking too busy tidying up I've after got myself. An, I've got another one down there. Have you? Oh, I can sit it on top of there then anyway, like that. And then that's it. So that's your mix made, and then Laura's going to show you how to make marshmallows. So I'm just going to put this out of the way. If you can hear the banging about, Harrison, I can hear you. And, um, pardon? You just put your bottle down. What with a nice big thud? Do you want to come and say hello to everybody with mummy? No? You just want everybody to know you're here? Okay, right. Right, so I'm going to jump on comments. Laura's ready, and I believe some of you want some of her funny stories. So we may as well get cracking, eh? I've got, well, I've got to keep it clean. Hello, everybody. It's good to be back in the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen. Thank you for joining me tonight. Um, so as you've already been told, I'm doing a demonstration of our delicious marshmallows. Um, I'm doing them two different ways, which... I don't think I've ever done them both on the same night. No, I've always yeah. done a whipping it up night and then a nice and sugar night. So I'm going to do them both together tonight so you can see the differences, see the different ways um, that they're made because there is some slight differences in that. And um, and then I've got some that are pre-made this morning that I can chop up as well and show you. So I just firstly need to move some of the bits that mum's got here out of the way just so we've got a bit more space. Oh yeah, do you want to move them down the other end? You can take them down the other end then. Harrison's open to have one. Yeah, I was going to say, give him one. Just one, Harrison. Which one do you want, a chocolate one or a lemon one? Chocolate. Oh. Like you don't like lemon? What's wrong with you? Okay, so let me just finish getting set up and bring all my bits in. Yeah, so Liz, the flavour does intensify if you leave it longer in the container. Uh, if you're going to use it all straight away with like buttercream, then you don't need to worry about leaving it to intensify. But if you're only going to leave, use small bits, it, it gets stronger as you go along. It only gets to a certain strength though, and then once you've got that strength, that's it. But I like to leave it in for a couple of days. Okay. Nikki King says, we need our Laura back in the pub a few times. Wink, wink. Back in the pub, yeah. <laughs> and Margaret Kirk said she did both of these recipes the other week and mixed them up yes you need to mix them up what a disaster yes you do need to remember to do it each way now Laura's always made um, marshmallows with the flavoured icing sugars but we came on once and that, Laura's laughing today she said how oh, you lot have not got fed up of learning about marshmallows who's fed up of learning about marshmallows I'm not but um, anyhow, one of you lovely ladies said, who can make it, can you make it with whipping it up? So there you go. That's why we're doing it both ways. Yeah. Okay, so I've got the two that I've made earlier um, here already. So this is the whipping it up one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the whipping it up one. And then there is a bit of time where it is whipping it up. <laughs> and, then, and I'm going to chop this one up to show you. But you know when it's set, when you can pick it up like this and it's, um, a solid but it is just like a big fluffy pillow and again this is the one made with the icing sugar so there's not loads of difference either way just some people prefer making it this way which contains the um, whipping it up which has got the egg in it and then we've got the icing sugar way here as well the whipping it up way is just more airy if that makes sense it's got like quite a few air bubbles in it um, and the icing sugar one is more of a of a solid but both are super squishy as marshmallows would be i've chosen these flavors tonight because this is what the kids have requested for tomorrow um but you can do any flavor that you want the recipe works in the same way with any of the flavors so you can color them as well as you can see the strawberry milkshake one i've done pink i've just left the salted caramel one um white because I didn't, I didn't want to colour it brown and it just not look as nice. Yeah, it looks a bit weird, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you can also make um, chocolate marshmallows as well, um, using the chocolate icing sugars. So there's lots of variation. There's lots of um, there's a couple of different recipes on the website. You just need to make sure that you are picking the whipping it up one or the icing sugar one, and then you're using the right 
um, products to match. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, so both recipes. So Barbara, Margaret Banks says it's the best marshmallow ever. Once you made your own marshmallow, you'll never go back to shop for it. It's just not the same. Claire brings it in here sometimes. and um, oh, does she? Yeah, I always eat it. I, so I have it, to keep some and then give some away as quick as possible. Because yeah. even when I... So I bag it up. I'm, I'm very into the big portions. Because... <laughs> Anybody that's watched me on here, everything's a big slice and a big portion because I just think then you just feel like you've just had one. You've not had too much. But um, when I'm doing this and I want to give some away, I'll portion it up in the little, you know, the little cellophane, cellophane bags and then just hand it out like that. And it does make a nice little gift as well. So um, you can make it for different things as well. You can, the kids want to make s'mores with it. Um, you can use it to decorate on top of your desserts, um, just to eat, just to gift. It's just like, oh, just love marshmallow. Well, quite Put it in your hot chocolate as yes. well. We had some over Christmas. We had hot chocolates with salted caramel marshmallows in them. Oh, just dreamy. It's just so good. <laughs> There's I love quite a that. few people who's made your marshmallows, Laura, and they've had, they've had their friends saying how delicious they are. Yeah. Mandy Harvey says she, with the raspberry ripple, she was absolutely gobsmacked at how nice they were. Um, Nikki King says she's been told they're the best ever. So there's quite a few ladies doing it. Yeah, and to make something like marshmallows as well, it sounds really difficult, but when you watch the demonstration tonight, if you've not made it, you're going to see how easy it is to make. And it's just the best thing for me whenever I make anything is that it's just so well received by everybody that. I gift it to or give it to and also like you you people you guys I want to say at home <laughs> you guys my friends um you make it and it just you know it just f makes you feel good to know yeah. that you can make something that yeah. people think is hard to make yeah but then you know the secret that it's not and you know with the icing sugars and you've got all the flavors and loads of different combinations it's just a gift that keeps giving well i have to say that lisa vatusha says i don't make it too often as it's so nice i can't resist it i'm with you lisa yeah. when laura makes it in here and i you lick the scoff loads of it <laughs> I, I scoff loads of it but I, I, i'm banned myself from it she's taken all four lots home tonight i can't have yeah. any of that going on but, so um it's amazing stuff as i said all the recipes are online on the website which Terry will put up at the bottom now so you can print off your recipes and have them to hand um, it is quite a sticky recipe as you can imagine so sometimes printing it off and having it to hand and putting it in a little a little book to keep all your recipes together you've, you've just got it to hand and you not, don't have to worry about sticking your hands on your computer um, to look through the recipe so both recipes are on there there's a couple of different variations on flavours but we we are going to narrow them down a bit but they're all under Laura's recipes as well so you can see them all together um, so should we get started yeah we'll get started did you want some colour pop out as well I've got some I've got some I've got mine okay so we've got the goods over there we'll come back to them um, so first thing that we need to do so I'm going to start with the whipping it up first so there is a bit of time in between um, so you you can you don't have to stay with it like when I make fudge you have to stay with it the whole time you, there is sections of it where you're just waiting for it so you can do your washing up or um, whatever else you need to do when you're in your kitchen what are you making on here like? the syrups oh <laughs> <laughs> so, we, so as mum said I've made marshmallows loads of times but she still doesn't know that I, I do part of it in a hob <laughs> <laughs> so right mum I'm going to show you again <laughs> So let's grab a bowl. So the whipping it up, I'm going to make with the um, sh strawberry that Mum's already well, done. Christine here for Holman me. says, "I'll have a go after tonight's live." Has not made it before, and she loves marshmallows. So if you haven't got the shots, just use your icing sugar. So just remember, I'm only showing you the shots because we're condensing things down. So we're going to be using them all the time as we wean you on them all. Yeah. And I will add it to the recipes as well so that you've got, you can see visually what you need to do to prepare yourself yeah. um, if you want to use the flavour. And as for the, as for the recipes, Karen Nail has quite rightly put it up there. You can put um, sugar and crumbs mixing it up, but you don't need to now. Just go to the website 
and then the top tab says learning resources pop in there baking recipes there and then do your search for marshmallows um, you can also um, go just scroll down the page on your phone and click the link and that'll take you through as well Lee Carroll said, Laura Stafford, get your mum to make it. Behave, Lee Carroll. Yeah. <laughs> Test her. Right. Yeah, no. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do with the um, whipping it up um, that I've got in here. So I've got 240 grams, so we're going to put that straight into this mixing bowl here. Sorry, Terry, I'm going to be a pain because I'm going to be here and then I'm going to be there. Oh. <laughs> I'm with you. So 240 grams in there and then to that we're adding 70 ml of water so just straight out of the tap you will notice that when i'm <laughs> when i'm trying to concentrate on what i'm doing i start talking like dip, 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 dip. <laughs> <laughs> so just bear with me so we're just i've said just to chop in but i just what i mean is just to stir it in just because um it doesn't dissolve as quick through the water so you just need to encourage it a little bit before we start making a massive cloud and covering all the cameras. We'll just give that a stir. Yes, Helen Brown, it's not long for Terry. She did show the baby bump earlier. So Helen Brown says, hope Terry is okay. Can't be long now, it's exciting. No, there was a present on here for you, did you I say? Know, I just opened it, it's from Lynn. So right, if you're yeah. on Lynn, thanks for my candle. Also, I've been absolutely obsessed with marshmallow and hot chocolate since yeah. we've been yeah. pregnant. <laughs> Coffee you like the marshmallows though don't you oh yeah so these marshmallows are great for eating they taste delicious they're no good for spiders webs cobwebs so you have to buy the cheap ones for them that's what claire brings them in for okay so now that we've chopped that in i'm just going to turn that on hopefully there is power on there we go so we're just going to leave that whisk to whisk and we're just going to let it whip itself up. Okay, so we're going to move over to the pan. If you want to move over, that's cute, Terry. <laughs> we're going to move over here. I'm going to do it slower. Right? Let's put in about the pan that we're using. So um, I've just got a new set of pans. So I've brought my old set of pans here so I don't have to keep bringing them every time to the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen. So I'm using a heavy base pan. A heavy base pan just has a thicker base, so it just makes it um, easier for the heat to distribute through your um, through the pan when you're cooking. So we've got an induction hob here. So a quick question, Laura: How do you store them, and how long do they last? Not very long. Yeah, not very long when them. we're eating them, but um, you store them in, so later on I'm going to show you how what to do with them once they come out, because they're sticky when, they, when they've made and they've set, and then we're going to make a coating for them, and then we're going to put that into an airtight container. So you can put them in an airtight, airtight container up until you're ready to use them, or if you're going to gift them, keep them in the airtight container in the mixture until you're ready to give them out, and um, they last for about two weeks. Like yeah, they're on. at the best two weeks. You can sort of stretch them to three weeks, but we normally ask them the question why. Yeah. <laughs> how? <laughs> In fact, yeah, how are you no. doing that? The amount of times that people used to ask me, how, how long did they last? And I'm like, well, <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> They'll all be gone. They'll all be gone. Okay, so now we've got that mixing up, we're going to get our gelatine ready. So I've got loads of jugs, so I just need to make sure that I'm picking the right one. So 140 is that one. So I'm just using cold water for the whipping it up gelatine, but for the icing sugar one, I'm, I'm going to be using warm water. So that's one of the differences between the two. And it's because we're going to let this gelatine bloom, but then we're going to heat it up later. So it's just a slightly different process. Are you making whipping it up one first and then making? Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to make the whipping it up ones yeah. and then start again with the, yeah. with the yeah. ice and sugar ones. <clears throat> and then Norton says you'll have to weaken her out. Well, let me tell you, in the sugar and crumb kitchen, they don't last till tomorrow. 
They usually divvied up at the end of the live and stuff. <laughs> so I'm adding three packets of the gelatine, which are about 12 grams each, and you buy them like this, and they come in a little packet like that. So you're just going, going to use um, the three packets all together. So I can use veggie gel. Yeah, you can use veggie gel. Veggie gel does give it a completely different texture to what you're going to see tonight. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Um, it's a lot more of a um, foamy. airy, foamy texture. Yeah. yeah. But I need to put the. I need. To, I need to do an extension of the. Press of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you use the veggie gel, it's quite, it's, it's, a, it's a bit weird really, it's a bit foamy and a lot yeah. lighter. Well, I'll show you the whipping it up ones, and you'll see that they're a bit airy, but the veggie ones are like an extreme of that. So they're, they're also mentioning your fudge, Laura, so Elaine says make sure fudge it lasts less than a day. Yeah. So I think your next slide has to be making fudge, oh you can't make fudge with it up, can you? No. <laughs> But yeah, that one. <laughs> no, but I will do. Uh, there is a fudge recipe that I want to do. That so I might do fudge, um, bring some fudge, and do a variation of it to make it into a dessert as well. Okay, so we've got our gelatine now. So we're just going to put that aside. We've got this ready. We've got this ready, and now we're going to move on to the pan. So first of all, you need 200 grams of granulated sugar, or you can use pasta sugar as well. No, it's whiskey put on there. Is it the same as the other one? Because it's making the right racket that, isn't it? They're not the same. Yeah, they're not the same. Yeah, they're not the same. Do you want me to try the other one? Basically, okay, doing something wrong with that one. Mm. I like this one better. Nope, don't say my Okay then. Right, and so, Karen Neely says, how much meat gelatine would you use if you didn't have these sachets? Did I ask this last time? Yeah. Did I asked this question last time. Did it? And there's a the compliment. Hey. Lorraine Pike is saying to Carol Gatterley, definitely give it a go. They're amazing and easy, even yeah. if you can do it. I feel like it's better gelatin leaves, but I have got my my coffees at home and I've got it writ on my coffees at home, so tomorrow I'll add that on. You'll have to send me a message now, Mum. So I need to tell you to add the veggie gel on now. Add mean. the veggie gel and the and the leaf. Okay, so 200 grams of granulated or pasta sugar. So it helps if I um, turn the scales on to... Okay, and then that's going to go straight into our pan. And then next, you ask to add in the liquid glucose. Which I've got, I've brought them all. <laughs> I've got so many of them. Some are open, some are not open. There we go, there's one that's open. Okay, so the liquid glucose, again, you can find this in most supermarkets as well. Um, and we're going to be using, in this recipe, one and a half tablespoons. Now, the easiest way to measure out one and a half tablespoons, because this is super sticky as well, is to get a tablespoon. What did she say, Dave? It said, Mom, are you nearly done? <laughs> <laughs> just get your tablespoon and just push it into the sugar so that you've got an outline of it. 
and then just fill that up. That is genius, Laura. Well, can't, I can't say I thought of it. I've seen it somewhere and I was like, I'm going to use that one day. <laughs> and here it is. So fill it up so that you've got your full table soon. And then just do a line across and just fill that side up to give you your half. There we go. And then next we're going to add in 100ml of cold water, which I think is this one. Yeah. So 100ml of water in there as well. And then we're just going to set this on to a medium temperature. So you don't need to do anything, you just need to leave it alone now so that it can just start to um, break down the sugar, break down that liquid glucose and it'll all start bubbling up. So I don't make my marshmallows using a um, temperature gauge mainly because it's so sticky and sets really hard once it's cold. It just makes so much mess on my thermometer that I've just learned how to do it without it so I know where it's up to. And I've put that in the in the recipe um, here. So you can use a thermometer if you want to. But we're looking at again it's 115 degrees. But all you really want is for it to start bubbling and then let it bubble for a few minutes after that. So let's go back to over here. We're just looking at this thickening up just slightly, so it's roughly about six minutes. We'll just leave that on a little bit longer. And now that we've got our three things ready, so the mix is going, the gelatine here, and the sugar mixture is heating up here. Turn that that way. You don't need to whisk it or stir it anything at this stage. Just leave it to bubble on its own. We're just going to get our tin ready. So I'm going to take this one out and pop it on the side. Pop it over there. So I'm just using um, a normal tray baked brownie tin. So I think it's about 8 by 8 mm -hmm. And something like that. So it's only like a rough size. I think my other one is slightly bigger than this one. But just a square, a square tin works nice. And you're just going to cover it in cling film. You need to go a little bit over this side. And then don't break it off just yet. Just pull it out a little bit more. Never happened before. Oh, <laughs> oh the cling film got stuck. <laughs> but it's live, so that's what happens. <laughs> so I like to stick one side there and then lift this side while trying to pod it in as far down as possible into the tin. Then we're going to take some vegetable oil or sunflower oil, put a little bit in a bowl, and turn that off now. So it's thickened up a little bit, got a nice creamy texture, but when you push the whisk back in, you should be able to see a little bit of a, a dent from the whisk. And let's just go back over. So once it's started boiling like this, just give it a little stir just to make sure that there's no um, sugar attached to the base of your pan. So you see that I didn't need to stir it to start with because it's just melting down straight away on its own. So just give it a little whisk and then we're just going to leave it now to bubble for a few minutes. So back to your tin. Get a little pastry brush. 
and you just need to coat the inside of your tin and this is just going to stop it from sticking to the marshmallow when we want to get it out later on and I'll show you why because I'll leave a little bit of marshmallow I'll leave a little side that's not got this oil on so you can see what will happen you'll just have nightmares trying to get it out so just make sure it's well coated and if it goes down like that on that side just coat the side of the tin instead and then we're just going to brush starting bit of this here <clears throat> now the recipe on the website says um, uh, we've got various recipes on the website with the icing sugars um, in different flavours you can use any flavour you want okay so just because it says black cherry or chocolate milkshake or it's chocolate the, honeycomb. The main reason why we've got the different variations on there is because when we just put marshmallows that you can use any flavour. Get a load of messages. We get a load of messages <laughs> about what flavour should I use. So we've put a few variations on there because when you think about marshmallow you do think of a white or pink marshmallow or yeah. you don't think about like the raspberry ripple one. I've put a jam through it. Yeah. So that's just to let you know that you can put a jam through it, you don't have to put a colour through it. And then we've done the black cherry one purple, so you can see that it can be coloured. And then we've done one with the chocolate icing sugar, so you can see that it's chocolate. And then we've done a whipping it up one because it's completely different from all the others. So that's why there's so many different ones, but if you want to do a chocolate one, use the chocolate one the same, but use any of the chocolate flavours. And then if you want to do black cherry or raspberry ripple recipes, you can use any, like you could do a lemon drizzle one and add lemon curd into the marshmallow mix before it, it's set in. It's just, it's just to give you ideas of what you can do, really. And we were just a bit worried about taking them off and then you're just doing the one type yeah, of marshmallow I'm, I'm all the time. I'm always on Laura, we just need to reduce it to one recipe. Yeah. One of each. And I'm always telling her why. <laughs> <laughs> why we can't. Okay, so now it's been bubbling for a few minutes, you're just going to have a very hot sugar mix like this. And we're just going to take it slightly off the um, heat. We're going to get our gelatine that we did before here. So this is bloomed nicely now. So this should be like um, ooh, a solid. We don't want that in there. So this should be like a solid. And we're going to now put that into this sugar mixture to break break it down so don't worry about how it looks so do this off the heat because we've got this at already at a temperature of 115 degrees so get it all in there and then just use your whisk to just break that down into that hot, li hot liquid so it should only take about a minute to do you can see you. <laughs> Look, come and say hello to them, Harrison. Come on, you, you might, might as well. well they can see Give you them all a wave. Tell them who, you, who are you. What's your name? So you may recognise me from five years ago when I was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> your mum used to come here with you in her tummy. Yeah. So Harrison, do you want to tell them your name? Do you want to tell them how old you are? Do you want to give them a wave? Are you 18? <laughs> so they can have a wave. <laughs> wave only. Five. Five. Ah, oh, right, good. At least you know that. Five but thinks he's 18. Twenty. <laughs> 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 Twenty like your brother. No, uh, no don't touch. Right, step aside now, Harrison. Step aside, Harrison. Okay, so it's not hot. It's very hot now. So we're gonna now Add put away, this Harrison. mixture, our hot so this is our hot syrup and our gelatine mix is gonna go into um, the mixer. So we need the mixer on. They're all saying hello to you, Harrison. And for some reason they think you're cute. Not quite <laughs> sure why. <laughs> So when, you know that the gelatine is mixed in when you can't see anything in there. 
shouldn't be any lumps or anything and it's still um, trans, what is it, transfluent, is that what you say? Translucent. <laughs> you say your words. Ah. It's, it's, it's clear. It's, it's got a yellowish it's colour because of the gelatine that's go, gone into it, but it's still clear. If you move your pan, you can still see the base of the pan, and that's how we want it to be. So I'm going to pour this into a jug and then tip it into the mixer so you can see it. You don't have to, you can just go straight from your pan into the mixer. Um, but this is just easier for the camera, so I'm just going to put half of it in. Right, go and sit back down there, please. Good boy. Because yeah. I've had that. Put it back on top. Yeah. And then you want to pour it into the mixing bowl down the side. So where's the camera? The camera's back inside, isn't it? So you want to pour it in the side but not so it's hitting the whisk, because if it hits the whisk, it's then going to splash onto you. So if you just pour it down the side of the bowl, just really gently. Sorry if you've got a big... No, you're not getting my forehead shot, that's good. <laughs> Glad I washed my hair yesterday. So just pour it really gently, and the mixture will go really, really loose. Keep going until you've got it all in there. So we've got the first half in. We'll get the next half in now. So again, just make sure you're not splashing it on yourself. Okay, if you want to add a colour into this, now's the time to add the colour in um, once everything's in there. I just think it's better to add the colour in last because you can see that all the consistencies are right um, and that the gelatine's been added and it's all been absorbed into it. So once you can see that, then you can add in your colour. So as I'm doing strawberry milkshake, I'm just going to use the pink. If excuse my... Um, colours because the kids have been making all their Christmas decorations Please? with it. Pr Christmas cookies, didn't they? You made gingerbread houses. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to do So I'm using the colour pop Toto colours, and you get a set of nine. And they're like the nine colours that you need to make nearly every colour. So, so Harrison, they're asking why you're shy. I'm put a little drop mm. in there because I don't want it to be too dark. And then I'm going to speed that up a little bit now. Maybe I will put a little bit more in. <laughs> no way. I want it pinker. Oh, do you want it pinker? Right, okay. Yeah. Mommy, do you like pink? I do like pink, yeah. Mommy, that is really Everybody pink Everybody that works with sugar and plums likes pink, Harrison. Why though? Are you don't work here. Do you work here? <laughs> <laughs> Probably even have pink cloths. Well, this is you pink. can sit there. That is pink. Yeah, that is pink. <laughs> okay, so now we need to let that mix again for about 10 minutes roughly. So you can see in there now it's just a very thin liquid and we just want to keep it going now until it whips up and it'll double in, in size um, and get into that nice thick consistency. Right, okay, so while we're waiting for that, I'll just quickly run over everything that we've done. Um, so first of all, we added to the mixer the 240 grams of the whipping it up with 70 ml of water and we just mix that up, um, whisk that up first. And then we got our gelatine ready, which was three packets of gelatine with 140 ml of cold water. And then we made a sugar syrup in the pan with 200 grams of granulated sugar, one and a half tablespoons of the liquid glucose and 100 ml of water. 
and then we've added the gelatine to that to loosen it and then we've added all of that into there so everything that we've now used in the recipe is all in there making our marshmallows so while we've got a few minutes we'll just move that I think I'll move him. over there and we're going to put you're being silly you can sit here with me Harrison not shy but he just wants his he little, little shy, five minutes in the limelight kind of feel his mum's show yeah it's a tough one, aren't you? Oh. There, double monster. Pardon? Oh. Did you like the cupcake? Which one did you have? Chocolate or lemon? Yeah. Was it nice? Yeah. Would you want another one? No. No, <laughs> Grandma, no. I'll never get into bed. Are you trying to move around there? No. <laughs> okay, so I might as well show you this now while we've got a bit of time. So this is the whipping it up one. So because it's greased with the oil, I can just take that fully off my um, cling film. And place it straight onto my chopping board. So nothing's on the cling film. Everything's there. I've not, not lost any of it. Okay, and then what we need to make is a coating for it. So the coating is just 50-50 of corn flour and of the um, whipping it up icing sugar. So this just stops it from, when we chop it up, it's sticky, so we're trying to stop it from sticking to the other marshmallows that we chop up, but at the same time, keep the flavour instead of tasting just corn flour. So if you haven't made marshmallows before, who's going to give them a go? So we know one lady's going to give them a go after the live. Make sure you share your pictures with us. Those who've made them before, make sure you share your pictures, tag in Laura. It's always really nice when you tag in the people who showed you how to make them. And I know Laura's always really chuffed. And we're really chuffed when she makes them. And when I asked her to make them again, she goes, Mum, how many times do you want me to make these things? I didn't actually complain this time because she said... <laughs> that I was going to be on the on the main page yeah. <laughs> and I was like oh well somebody different might watch it okay so you did come in saying I've made these six times I've made them more than six times <laughs> over how many years have I been oh, watching no. them yeah, yeah. Be before Harrison was like oh. Before you were born, when Holly was small. If you meet, even made them live when uh, he was in the tummy. I think about, about a month before you were Eight gym, years now. Well, I was doing videos. <laughs> and uh, funny enough, Holly actually sent me a message today saying, Mum, can you? is this some way that all my friends can't see the videos of me and her doing the baking when we, when we first started Sugar and Crumbs? I was like, well, you're the one that's told him about it, not me. <laughs> it's there for life. So just mix the corn flour and the, um, ice, the whipping it up ice and sugar together, and that's going to be our coating. I'll just quickly show you this, so you can see. There's the thicker texture so it's still really runny off the whisk so we know that we're not there but you can see that there's lots of air bubbles going through there now so we need to keep going but when I put the whisk in you can see that it's creating um, an imprint so you just need to just need to learn how to use this mixer bear with me so just keep it on quite gentle you don't want to 
If you've got, I've got the um, KitchenAid at home, so I have it on a number two, just so that I can keep control of it, because you don't want to over mix it and it get really sticky and then you can't transfer it to your tin. So I just like to keep it low and slow and just let it get on with itself. So they want to know, Laura, did you have a good time skiing? In Lapland. Lapland, that's it. Skiing, yeah. Skiing's next. Skiing, yeah. <laughs> yes. Did you have a good, did a good time? Have you got any funny stories to tell them, Laura? <laughs> <laughs> So Ryan was really ill when we went, we've all had that horrible cold flu, whatever it was, I don't know, it lasted four weeks, when we went away for Christmas, we, you, well you didn't have it, you were alright, um, but me and Ryan had it really bad, and he was really bad when we left to go, and he didn't want to go, but I was like, there's six of us going, there's only one of us that's like really, really ill, so you're just going to have to come with us, so we went, but... I just went out every day with the kids and did all the itinerary of everything and really enjoyed myself, yeah. bought myself on some of the trips and um, yeah, it was really good fun but the older kids wanted to go on the snowmobile ride which is not something that I'm a massive fan of because <laughs> I've always been a passenger, I've never drove um, but because two of the kids were un well didn't have driving licence Josh, who's 20, could drive, and then I had to drive one of the other girls, so on Christmas Eve night, we went to do that, and uh, when we got there, the guy was like, um, it can be very, um, what did he say? It's like one of those, when you, you know, when you're on the coach on the way, you've already signed up, you've already paid, <laughs> and then they're like, right, so it's 30, 30 euros per driver to make sure that you're fully covered, for everything so that if you have any accidents or you break something you've only got to pay 150 euros to have it fixed rather than like two grand or whatever so you're like straight away you're like damn it i'm gonna have to pay it because it will be me it's and i was like behave. how easy is it to crash a snowmobile we're on a trail it should be fine i'm not gonna go mad i'm not gonna drive fast or anything so i said to josh i was like right i'll just pay it because i, I just don't want to risk it you just never know he's not sensible and I was thinking more that he would break it than I would break it so the demonstration of how to drive the snowmobile took less than two minutes you'd press this you press that if you need to do an emergency you shut the engine off and it's tied to your waist so during the trip all the way around um, I Holly hadn't took any videos and Lapland's beautiful like it's just out of this world amazing and I said to Holly take a video and she goes no my hand's too cold cause it's minus 30 I was like come on just do a little video of me on a snow and we're like your dad will be really impressed that I can drive so we're following this trail and it was up and down but the front bits are like that all the time so all the time you're on this really narrow path and it's all like massive trees either side and it's up and down and round and round, whatever. And you, you like this, you constantly like <laughs> on the thing. So I was like, Holly, take a video, look, I'm driving. <laughs> so she's like, Yeah, yeah, I'll take one. So we stopped just so they could check in that everybody was happy and okay. So Holly gets the video out, and about two minutes into this video, <laughs> driving along, I'm going, You're getting it, aren't you? She's like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going along, and then it just like slow motion and I've got the video I'll have to show you in the private group but I've got the video and it's just like the slowest motion fall ever <laughs> the things the sleigh things at the front they just I'll turn that off a second they, they were just like wobbling and it just like I was like oh it's a bit slippy here so then it just like <laughs> slipped to the side and all the side is just that powdered snow where you just disappear. <laughs> so I'm just there, like, doing, I'm probably doing, like, five miles an hour. So I'm like, woo, yeah, look at me, yeah. And then next minute it slides and I have a little panic and I grip it. And then it hits the thing and we just go over and the whole thing just disappeared in the snow. But then the worst of it was, so I'm, like, shutting it off, shutting it off, because I'm like, well, I don't know, I'm going to shoot off or something. <laughs> And then I shut it off. As I shut it off, I unbalance myself because I'm on the side. So then I just fall 
and my head goes into the snow with my helmet and I get a full face of snow <laughs> in my mouth because I, I didn't have my visor on because I couldn't see. And it just went straight on and in the slow motion video no. I'm just upside down. Did I show you that one? No. Upside down, my bum's up in the air and Holly's still on it filming everything. No. And she's like, Mum, I can't believe you've just done that. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> I'm like, help me, I can't get oh, out. Wesley said and that. every time I'm like trying to get up through the snow, my legs yeah. were just disappearing because the snow was up here and I couldn't get out. And then next minute, all the other people just come to see what's happened and then have to rescue me and then they have to get another <laughs> another thing to pull it out. And I'm just thinking, I'm glad I paid that 30 euros. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm this worth. Yeah. Oh, I said, no wonder you fell over, you were going that slow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was Josh, like my me. little moment in, in Lapland. I was, think, <laughs> I was thinking I was just like really cool, but apparently I wasn't. Okay, so back to the marshmallows. Um, so when you're ready to separate them up, you just need to have your bowl of ice and sugar mix, corn flour mix, and then there's another bowl as well so that you can dip them and then add them into that. So as I said, I like a really good piece of marshmallow. So I like to um, chop a, that sort of size piece all the way across. And because there's oil on the top, the oil will go onto the knife. So once it's going through, the oil goes with the knife through but if you are having any problems just go back to that brush that we brushed the tray with and just give it a little brush on either side you can't taste the oil on the marshmallow so you don't need to worry about no, that can't. transferring because it's not going to so slice up a couple of your pieces i'll we'll just show you there with the whipping it up that it's just got a bit more of a whipped texture um quite a few air bubbles in it but it's lovely and light <laughs> <laughs> wibble wobble it's lovely lovely like really nice texture so there's not much difference between the two in te in um taste but more the texture of yeah. it so take your little squares and then just add them in to add a couple at a time into this bowl can you see this bowl here <coughs> We'll do one row. <laughs> and then you can just give them a little swirl round or just get your fingers in. And then just make sure that they're coated all the way round. So when you when you when you've bought marshmallows you can see that they've got some sort of coating on, but because they're packaged, their coating's like set on it. Um, whereas fresh homemade marshmallows which should have this powdered coating um, that's been put on by hand. So tap them off once you know that they're fully coated and you're just making sure that they're coated so that they don't stick together so there's nothing sticking together when you put it in your, in your packet and then pop them in there like so. And then you've got your marshmallows ready to put in your um, storage airtight container. That's the word. If you can hear a noise on the floor, that's Harrison's cars. <laughs> the sound effects. So if I, I don't coat them, then they stick together like that. So when they're all in the bag, they're just going to stick together more and more and more. And then you're not going to be able to, they'll just, they'll just start to um, fuse together again. So we don't want that. So I'm just going to stop there while we go back to the marshmallow that we're making. I'll <coughs> check. Yep. Let it start Louise Paris says, I've made your marshmallows many times, Laura. Can you put them in hot chocolate? Yes, she yes, can. can. Yes, she can. <laughs> Done it. Yes, you can. <laughs> Do you have yours in hot chocolate, Harrison? Yeah, Baba. Which is your favourite flavour? We don't say yeah, baby. To have it. What's your fla favourite flavour marshmallow? I This is why I shouldn't tell stories when I'm doing my Do you like strawberry milkshake ones? Yes. 
Yes. You like all of them, really. Just don't like the coffee one. Yeah. Right. So this is what happens when you don't. Have you, is it set? <laughs> it's already started to set, yeah, because I've been chatting. I was surprised that you turned it off. Well, I thought I just wanted you to hear my story. I got excited. <laughs> well, that mix up now, do you think? Um, yeah, you shouldn't really turn the mixer off, because then, then it begins to set. <laughs> yeah, you can still mix it up, but it's just, it's not, I can smooth it out now. It's not... Yeah. If I mix it any more, it's just going to get too sticky and then I won't yeah. be able to get it in the tin. So I can still get yeah. it in the tin now. So we'll just keep funny stories till after you've mixed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I can get it out still. So I'll just have yeah, to I might it save you all some for Wednesday because there's a couple of you coming on Wednesday. So I'll save some. Let Laura take the rest home. So I'm going to pour it in and then I'm going to smooth it out with a bit of soap. Well done trying to smooth that out, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> You're not scared. This is how not to talk when, doing, <laughs> when making them. This is what... Um, I've done this before. <laughs> yeah. Right, what I'm going to do is we'll oil this side and I'll use the cling film to push it down. Yeah. So Laura stopped to tell you a funny story and while she's doing it, it was setting. So I just don't learn. We know what to do. Don't talk. Like she says when she's making fudge, if anyone's out knocking on the doorbell or phoning you, ignore them. This one's not going to be smooth. Any strangers watching us on the live page now, Laura, be wondering what type of marshmallows are these? These are going to be the ones that you put in your hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> that nobody sees. Yeah. Right. Good job of making two lots, isn't it? Let's make them out of the way. No one will see. No, you're not using it. I can wash that bowl. Do you want me to wash it out? Yeah. Take me two minutes. You carry on doing you, the things. You wash that. I've got a bit of time. Harrison, stop it. You said you were going to bake the egg, you. <laughs> I forgot. Right. Okay. Forgotten. Okay, so if you're not chatting and you keep an eye on it, then you're going to end up with this. So this is the whipping it up version. So this is what I just made. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Laura. <laughs> Yes, darling. Can I? Well, try a piece. Can I wash my hands and have a little feeling? Yeah, go and wash your hands and in the toilet. Yeah. You can taste test it for all the, all the people at home. So I'm not going to chop all of it up because I'm going to move on to the other one. But you can, I'm going to um, take a slice of that and put it next to the other marshmallows that I'm going to make now so you can see the difference really in the texture. Harrison, make sure you dry your hands. You're going to tell them how nice they are. Are you going to show them? No. Okay. You're not going to show them how nice they are. You're just going to have one and not see. Say anything. Good. Right, so that can go. Oh no, that's not coming. Don't Right. Can you try one? Yeah. Terry, I'm trying for you, Laura. Can you go, Terry? Mm -hmm. My dad really squishy. Yeah, squishy. Oh, they are squishy. Thank you. Oh, yummy. You know what flavour yeah, it is? Mm. Okay, so let's move on to the icing sugar um, with the flavour shot. So we've got yeah, nice. the salted mm. caramel flavour that we're going to use with this one. So, as I said, it's very different to make <laughs> this one as it was to make the last one. So again, you need a heavy base pan. Mm. That way. Right, you go and sit back down there now. Thank you. 
Um, Mum, can you fill that with 180 ml of cold, 100 ml from the kettle and then 80 ml with cold water, please? Yes, I'm going to be this side first. So as with the whipping it up, we have, we have to start over here with the um, whipping it up mixture. Everything goes into the syrup apart from the gelatine and then we're just going to add them separately. Um, but this time the gelatine is going to be warm. So we're going to start with that first. Mum's getting my water. So this recipe has more liquid glucose in it. Um, with the whipping it up, because that has egg in it, that's already a stabiliser for the marshmallows. So because we're not having any egg in these marshmallows, we need more liquid glucose to give us the texture that we're looking for. So the first thing that we're going to do is... Get also, them. just to say, there's nothing in a supermarket that will beat their marshmallows ever. Amazing. Good. And the fact that you can choose your own flavour, yeah. and have it tailored to you or your friend, amazing. 180, Laura. Um, yeah, please. Okay, so we need 200 grams of granulated or caster sugar. So that's going to go into the pan first. Person. Sit down, sugary boy. No way. No way. Go and do as you're told. Go and sit on the chair there next to Grandma. So everything in this recipe is, um, well not everything, but majority of the things that we're putting in is 200, 200, 200. So first of all, 200 grams of the granulated sugar. And then we're going to put 200 grams of our flavoured icing sugar, which we're using the salted caramel. Mm -hmm. Hi, Hi. So just place that on. So I always put the granulated sugar in first, then the icing sugar on top. And then I'm going to add in 200 grams of the liquid glucose. Now, um, these come in tubes of 140 so what I normally do is just take a full one so this one's an unopened one chop off the bottom end you can tell Terry likes marshmallows mm. I have to say I've just had a little tiny sneaky bit of the one that you ruined it tastes it's delicious. Not it's not ruined. It's no, not ruined. It's not ruined. delicious. It'll still be... And there's no lumps in it at all. Yes. Lumps, lumps. It's just visually not looking as nice as my <laughs> other one. <laughs> visually, it's having a bad day. So, day. those things that I've sent you by text, are you going to put a, mess, put a thing on there? Yes. Don't stop mixing. Don't yes. start talking. Ignore well, the I phone think and put, I think I'll probably put that in anyway. Ew, so what's put that, mummy? Liquid glucose. So, we're putting in the work? full 140 gram tube. So... Snipping it off at the end just helps you to get it out because getting it out of that tiny little hole at the top, don't know what that was made for. No, no, you get all of it if you snip it yeah. off. Yeah, and then because I've took the top bit off, it's allowing air through it, which helps it get it through. And then I can then push the bottom bit out that side, like the end of the toothpaste. <laughs> toothpaste. <laughs> And then we just need 60 grams from this one. So I roughly just guess, I've never had a problem just guesstimating, but you can roughly tell what half a tube is, um, how much you've got left. So this time I'm just going to go straight from the little tiny hole. I'm a good squeeze. Mm. Where's the ones you made? The pink ones. Here. That one. I feel a bit sick. Because <laughs> you don't know when there's a stop, that's the problem. <laughs> My baby auto. What did he say? No, don't ask him. <laughs> 
Did you hear what he said? He does a <laughs> lot of rhyming. Okay, so when you can feel that you've got roughly half in, in there. Okay, and then the last thing that's going to go in there is um, three tablespoons of water. I'll just grab that in here. And again, that's just going to go on the top. So that's just cold water or hot water. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, and then we're going to turn this on. Again, just on a medium setting. Don't need to do anything. Just let it start to um, melt down on its own. Um, Laura, I was asked a question before and I forgot to ask you. Have you ever made your own glucose syrup? I did once, yeah. Um, um, but I, I don't know what recipe that I followed for it. I think it was somebody in the group. Mandy Arley's yeah. made it and she said think, it works just yeah, as well. I think it was Mandy's recipe. Okay, so we've got 180 ml of um, warm water here. So we're going to add in, again, three sachets of the gelatine. And it is important that your gelatine is in date because if it's not, it just it just blooms even though it's in the hot water, which is not ideal. You just want to make melt that down. So if you do have a problem that your water's not hot enough, because um, it's not hot water, it's warm water, but if it's not, to, you know, warm enough to melt it down, just add in a little tablespoon of boiling hot water just to break it down again for you because this time we're just going to add the gelatine straight into our mixer so we'd want to make sure that we've got no crystal bits in there so you just need to give that a good stir every now and again I will get a little bit that just doesn't want to break so down and I'll just take that out, that out. Yeah. while Laura sorts that out to so make your own glucose it's two cups of caster sugar this is American recipe this three quarters of cups of water, a pinch of salt and a teaspoon of cream of tartar. You put it all in the pan and you, uh, you bring it to the boil and then leave it, then you bring it to, leave it to simmer until all the sugar is dissolved. I'll get the correct measurements and I'll get it put on the website for you. Okay, so we're just going to leave that but we do, because we don't want this one to bloom like the other one did and it became like that crystal solid. We just want to keep giving this one a little stir, so just keep going back to it. Um, so, just watch this, that it's starting to break down. It'll just turn into a full um, liquid syrup. And then again with this one, so we've got all our ingredients in the pan or in here now for this one. So you just need to get your... If you are going to make your own glucose, it does say only oh, make small batches because you can't keep it for longer than a month because it starts to crystallise. <clears throat> so this one takes less time in the pan but more time in the mixer. Do you want me to stir in this, Laura? No. So again, we're going to do the same as what we did before with the tin. So if it doesn't look like it's starting to be liquefy all the way around, you can just give it a little wobble just to make sure that all, all the bits are going to start to reduce down. And then once it does start bubbling like it is now, then you can start to whisk it. So Michelle Quinn has said, if using veggie gel, do you add it to the syrup in the pan before putting in mixer, or is it a complete swap, please? When I done straight swap, it oh, never set. Because I've it when I've done a straight swap, it never set. I've obviously done something wrong. I don't know the answer to that, but it's, Laura does it. It's not a complete straight swap.
You can use veggie gel, Nicola. I'll let Laura concentrate on this and then she'll give you the answer. Do you want me to stir that? No, just keep him away from it. I am keeping him away. Okay, away so again, it. go back to our <laughs> oil. Sugar crumbs. The sugar crumbs. <laughs> So it's important to just have this ready um, once you've got the the mixture in the whisk in the the mixture in the mixer. Mixer. That sounded hard. <laughs> so that you're ready to pour it out as soon as you know that it's ready in there. So veggie gel, do you have to heat it up? We don't make it with veggie gel much, do we? No, I, don't make, I don't make it that often. I have done it, but I, I don't make it that often. Yeah. Um, I think so those who remember. use veggie gel will be able to help us more. We, 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 Laura only made it, I think, once or twice, just to I see if it I've works. I've made it twice, yeah. With veggie gel, yeah. Yeah, I just can't remember, but I have got the recipe at home, so I will put it on there. We did have it on, but it was on the old website, wasn't yeah. it? So we moved it. Put this one on a little too hard. Mm -hmm. It'll be absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. So we just want that to start bubbling. And um, did you wash the whisk bit? Oh, well, you had one down here. I have washed I it. it. Uh, it's there. I have, I have washed it. But I've already can't it's use it. For me. I think this one was less noisy than the other one. Okay, so we're just waiting again. This, so we're starting to get a few bubbles in there now. We'll just let that bubble up. So whereas last time we had the whipping it up in here and then we had the hot syrup, this way we're doing the hot syrup first. And then once the hot syrup has started to um, double in size, we're gonna add, well not double in size, but we'll get like a more of a thicker texture. We're gonna add in the gelatine. So just keep going back to this gelatine. So I can see any little bits like that, just get rid of them. Because they're not going to, they'll just come out in your marshmallow like big, big pieces. So just keep giving it a little stir and just check. So again, I don't use a thermometer for this. Once it's started bubbling like I did before, we're just giving it a few minutes um, just to um, roughly about four or five minutes. It just gives it that chance to like really heat up all the way through the sugar syrup. And because we've already got the icing sugar in here, it's not as um, clear as what our other syrup was because in that one we just had caster sugar and a tiny bit of liquid glucose. And this one we've got the salt, salted caramel. Can you smell it? Yeah. Smell nice. Not too good. Nosey blocks. Well, I can smell a little bit close. Nothing to do with it. I go through what's in the way. Okay, so I'll just quickly run through what we've got in the pan. We've got 200 grams of the granulated sugar, 200 grams of the icing sugar with the flavour shot in, 200 grams of the liquid glucose, and three tablespoons of water. So that's all that's in here. And then we've got our three sachets of gelatine with 140 ml of warm water in there. Now the difference with this syrup is one, it's cloudy. Two, when we put it in the whisker, because it's hot syrup touching a cold steel um, mixing bowl, it will start to set straight away because we've got to keep whisking it. We've got to keep whisking it to get to the consistency that we want. So you do get on the outside of your dish um, little crystal pieces, but they stick to the side 
of the day of the um, mixing bowl so they don't affect it in any way but just don't try and force them to come down um, you're just going to lightly scrape scrape it when we take it out so Laura Alice is asking which is the easiest me method to use um, which one do you prefer I just, it, it doesn't well it doesn't make any difference to me because I I just use what I've got in. So if I wanted that flavour and I only had it in whipping it up, I'd make it the whipping it up way. The yeah. ingredients are the same, you're just using them a different way. So if you bought the ingredients for the icing sugar and then you decide that you want to do it whipping it up, you've still got all the ingredients. Right, Harrison, can you go and sit down please? So this time, I'm going to pour it in, just from the pan, very slowly down to the side while the whisk is already on. And I'll show you what I mean about the, the crystal bits on the side. so it's not on your whisk everything that's in your pan now if you don't go and put hot water on it straight away it will just get harder and harder so the best thing to do is take your pan straight away pour some hot water in and just let it all dissolve and then it'll be much easier to clean I'm just going to turn that off a little bit We just want it to get to um, a thicker consistency before we're going to add in the gelatine to it. So again, keep the gelatine in the jug and once it starts to go a little bit thicker and a little bit lighter, that's when you can add your gelatine in it. So keep the mixer going. Can you see into that bowl? Yes. Once it's starting to get thick like it is now, start to pour in the gelatine. And if you see any little lumps, just try and catch them with the spoon before they go in because that will stay, isn't it? So it's important to get the gelatine in while the sugar mixture is still hot because that's going to help to break down the gelatine even, even further. So you don't want to let the mix inside the mixing bowl go cold. But it's a 50 50 year on versions. Margaret Kirk, the rain pipe, and uh, Mandy Harvey like the, um, like the whipping it up version. Michelle Mitchell likes the, um, Michelle? the sugar, icing sugar version, and uh, there's a few others who do. And the Nougat recipe, Laura, did you put that on the web website? Yeah. 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 No, it's just a question here. Um, yeah. yeah, it should be there. I made it just for Christmas, so that's. It should be on there because I got it. I would have done it from there. <laughs> Unless I had it printed off. Unless you deleted it by accident. Oh, no. She'll be in trouble for. When we when we had everything moved to the new website, everything all my recipes came up as like platform something. And yeah. I was like, who's this platform somebody trying to take all my recipes? What it is, it was the 404, so they yeah. haven't got a divert on them. So, any gaps again around the sides, just fill with a bit more oil. You just want to get it as low as possible so that the mixture is like more of a square mixture. Yeah, they're, 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 if you just typed in the word nougat, nougat. It's how you spell it, isn't yeah. it, as N well? N O U G A T. Um, it's on there. Laura made it with whipping it up, so it's on there. Yeah, that's another thing. It doesn't it's put it, the right pictures on there. It doesn't well. last long. No, that <laughs> doesn't last long. I guess. Especially with all like that. the nuts and fruit that yeah. we put in it. Okay, so again, while we're waiting on um, the mixer to mix, carry on mixing that up, and the rain pipes making lemon marshmallows. We're whipping it up while she's watching. Mm. Lucky her. Make sure you post some pictures afterwards. 
You know, lemon marshmallows are nice if you put like a little drizzle of lemon curd through. Salted caramel, a bit of caramel through. You don't need to, they're nice as they are. Is it brown in this box? No. Did you want to make a latte colour? Well, I was thinking to enhance it, but it does give it a little bit of a colour. I was thinking to enhance the colour a little bit. Yeah, well, but I was going to say yellow and a bit of orange. You might make a latte colour. Well, it's like learning all your primary colours yeah. again. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll just leave it. I'll leave it. I don't know. <laughs> I'll end up making it. What just put it what is this? This? Wow. That's my colour. It's green now. It's not green, it's coats on a green board. Oh, it's not green, it's a green board. <laughs> okay, so let's get this other one. This is the icing sugar marshmallows. Let's undo this one. Yes, Alice, it's delicious, the new girl recipe. Laura did a live on it. That wasn't in the group though, that was it, the live. Was that on YouTube? Did I that? think I did that in 2021, didn't I? Oh, yeah. In the summer. And we ate all that as well. Yeah, <laughs> we did. We like to enjoy what we make. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So with this one, again, just keep checking it every couple of minutes so we can see that it's not making any... Um, attachment to the whisk so far but we are getting a little print when we get in so we're not anywhere near yet so just turn it back on just check it every couple of minutes again I'm just, keep, I'm just keeping it between one and two on there okay so this one is whether you can see on camera so it's slightly thinner than the whipping it up version I love doing that. <laughs> um, so let's turn this one up upside down. So you can see the whipping it up one has got all these little air bubbles, which doesn't take anything away from it, um, but it's just a lot more of a foamy sort of yeah, it feels mixture when it's, foamy. When it's changed, yeah, when it's put yeah. into. But it is delicious. This, this one just doesn't have any on the outside really, but let's slice into it. I'm not sure if you like salted caramel hydrogen, but you can try this one if you want. Take that out there. And take another piece of this one off. Alright, I'll do it in a minute when I've made the mix. So the whipping it up one always comes out always comes out with the bubbles on the top and inside. Can you see that on the camera? You've got bubbles there, bubbles on the top. Whereas this one always comes out a lot smoother and then it has got at the odd air bubble inside. So there's not massive amounts of difference. This one's slightly thicker and lighter, but this one is still light. What now I say? They both taste delicious. It's just how it tastes in your mouth, doesn't it? Listen, what you need to do is make, make them both. Make and then both. decide. And your friends are going to be so impressed that you can actually make marshmallows. I love having Laura in the kitchen because she made things that I would never make because I think they're difficult to make. And then the way that she makes them is just, they're just so easy to make, really. So, again, for the um, salted caramel one, we're going to add 50 grams of the salted caramel icing sugar that we made to a bowl with 50 grams of the cocoa powder. Cocoa powder. Um, corn flour. Corn flour. <laughs> <laughs> Harrison, what are you doing? He's looking at himself. <laughs> being silly is. on the camera. Are you, you showing everybody how silly you can be? Sorry. No, I'm looking on that. I know, yeah, and no, everybody can see and you. And everyone can see what you're doing No, I'm it. making... We know what you're doing. Yeah, see the eyes on it. Can see the eyes on it? Eyes. They're your eyes. They're yours. They're making really big. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, I'm just checking the mixture again. So it's a little bit stickier when it's lifting off the whisk. And then when I put the whisk in, it's, it's definitely leaving a full imprint now. So we are getting closer to where we want it to be. So I just need to concentrate. 
now how to. Can't mess up two in a row. So just whisk the corn flour and the sugar together. So we've got our mix that we're going to roll them in. Let's chop some of this one up and then we can try it out. Have you got any gelatin sachets, sir? Um, Is this gelatin best before or used by? Oh, I've lost in a second. Don't be distracting me now, Mum. <laughs> don't, no. don't start. How am I distracted? By you and Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me who asked you to tell them a funny story. Yes, it was. It was. Yeah, but they asked me to ask you. <laughs> and you read it out. I was minding your own business. And then well, you read it out. I was going so to turn the mixture off, did I? They know I like telling a story. With the mixer off. I've just got to be careful now, because my husband can actually see this one. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing is, he do, he's not on Facebook, him, is he? No, no, but his friends are. Yeah. And everyone has that friend who goes, Oh, I've seen your Laura on Facebook Live the other day. She said this <laughs> and that. And then he'll be like, oh, really? How'd you log on that facey thing? It's what like... facey thing? <laughs> Facebook. How'd you get on that? Is that what he calls it? I don't know what it's called. So how'd you get on that, that facey book? Facey book. Like, it's just called Facebook. <laughs> facey book. I like it. And it was Lindsay Pearson who was asking about the uh, gelatine. Yeah, I'll check in a second. We'll just get a few more of these in. And then you can They'd like to see you make new gar again. Okay. Well, I've got all my dates in the diary with Mum for the next, I think the next four ones that I'm in for. Yep. Right up until I go, I go skiing and then I'll have, probably have some more stories. <laughs> so skiing stories. stories are fun. Ladies, if you go to the website, sugarandcrumbs.co.uk, there's a tab there that says shop. Drop down into that and you'll see FB Live wish list. And this week's offers are in there. So whipping it up is still in there. Um, cocoa powders are in there. I showed you them on Thursday. And then we've got the cake mixes in there as well. So uh, go and have a look over there. Um, the sugar paste will be dispatched. So all the sugar paste that was ordered and sold out was dispatched today. That's gone. So you'll be getting those orders tomorrow or Wednesday. And then we, as we've sold out, we've got a few colours left, not many, um, as we've sold out. But um, the next dis dispatch is next Monday. I would get it in quicker, but the manufacturer can't make it fast enough for me. Okay, so, just, so now I can see that it's actually thick while it's being whisked. I'm just going to stay with it now and just make sure that I'm keeping a full, full eye on it. <clears throat> so you can over whisk your marshmallow, as, as you've seen earlier. That was, that was a demonstration. <laughs> that was just so you knew. How, how Maria Wilson well. says, ah, oh, she was late getting but in. Don't, don't worry about it because <laughs> it'll still taste nice. Mary Wilson says, oh, late getting in, missed one of my favourite tutors doing my favourite demo. Oh, nice, isn't it? Thank you. Check it again. So, it's a little bit thicker than that. So, um, the sort of caramel ones I made this morning, I didn't colour them um, because I wasn't really sure what colours to do them. I was going to do them with a little hint of brown like mum, so like latte colours would be nice. But what's great about um, all the flavours is that they look really nice as white, but you can do them to, it, to your theme. If you're making them for something, you can do them any colours to fit your theme. Um, so we've just got the two options. I've mainly coloured mine so I knew which one was which. Do you want to try some? Oh, we won't say Solid no. caramel? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I promised myself I wasn't going to try any of your stuff tonight. They're practically fat free. They're <laughs> practically fat free. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that what they say about marshmallows? Mm. I don't understand how they are fat free, but they're that light and fluffy, they should be fat free. Anyways. 
Harrison. Got a salted caramel one. Leave the answer politely. <laughs> you always do so. They're saying, yeah, please, I'd like to try some, pass it over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll just send it through. So, I want to get this. I don't want to get it so that it's, st like with meringue, when you want it to stick to your whisk, you don't want it to stick to your whisk like meringue does, but you want it to have that thickness so that when you lift it, it comes up and it's running off like a thick, you know, because we want to pull... Is that, is that how the last one should have been? Yeah. That's how it was until I stopped it and chatting. <laughs> so this, let's just rewind. <laughs> this is what the pink one looked like. And Leah said, when would you swirl jam or curd through if you so, wanted to? So in a minute when you put it in. So you need to keep it. So you just need to remember that it's not... I think a lot of people when they're doing meringue, they, they start thinking about it like... I, even I just said it, meringue. When you're doing the marshmallow, you start thinking of it being like meringue mm. and it's not. So you need to just make sure that it's thick but loose because we want to be able to pour it. Now, if you're going to use the jam, then you need to already have the jam ready. So you pour some of the jam into a little bowl, heat it up in the microwave, or add a little bit of boiling hot water to it and have it ready before the marshmallow's ready. And then you can swirl it into, um, into the meringue. And I feel like mum's looking for some jam now. I was just looking for some caramel. Oh. We haven't got any. So yeah, um, just have that ready. I, I have put it in the raspberry ripple recipe so that it is there so you know when to add it in and what to do with it. So this is how we want it to go. We want it to be a bit more loose like this so it's still thick and we can move it about a little bit. But as soon as it's out of that whisk and it's not having the air run through it, it starts to set. So if I, like when I'm doing it now, you can see that it's starting to can you not scrape all get stringy. Out? Stringy. Yeah. No. So what I was saying about this recipe, what's different to the whipping it up one, the whipping it up, because the gelatine's added to the syrup um, in, in a different way, it's much nicer in the bowl. But this one... And this is what I mean, don't panic about. Because when I first started making marshmallows, people were panicking about it having like the crystal pieces on, mm. the, on the side. So when I'm taking that out now, I just scrape really lightly on the side so I don't pull any of that crystallised bit off. So I don't know whether you can see it, but it's just like splashes of it on the side there. So we don't mm. want to get that in our marshmallow because mm. then we'll, we'll taste it. So get out as much as you can and then... Again, just pour some hot water in, boiling hot water from the kettle in there straight away and it'll dissolve in a minute. So back to this marshmallow. Bring back over your oil and your brush and start to coat the piece that we've left attached. How long does it take to set, Laura? About an hour and a half minimum, I'd give it. So it'll, what it'll start to do, it'll set on the top before it'll set yeah. at the bottom so because it's it's obviously a lot warmer underneath than what it is on the top so give it an hour and a half you just put it up just pop it on the side somewhere out of direct sunlight and this is the one that set in the bowl before it was when i pulled a piece off it was set that gooey inside yeah so you're just gonna put the clink so this is what you didn't get to see before so you've overlapped that top piece over the top now and you're just bringing all this down and just like tucking it in like you're putting it to bed <laughs> tuck, it, tuck it all in so it's all nicely and covered because you don't want the air to get to it either so we're making sure that it's all covered so anything that air dries while it's setting will get like a crusty coating on it and that's not as nice either so just make sure that it's all covered all the way around and then you're just going to place that on the side as it is for an, an hour and a half minimum um, and then continue with this bit here so we've got where's that salt to come? Don't know. <laughs> so yeah. So that's that one. 
that's that one. Um, I won't chop it all up because it'll take me a while and I think you've seen enough. But yeah, once that one's set, just continue with this. Once it's in the bowl and coated, put it in your airtight container. Um, I put the extra, so like there, once I've done all this, I will have extra icing, sugar, corn flour mix. I just put that little bit of that sprinkle in the bottom, a little sprinkle on the top, just so it's loose. If any did feel a bit sticky when you were getting it out, you can just give it a quick, um, a quick coating. You don't have to go and get some more. So yeah, there we go. There we go. Marshmallow two ways. I thought you were going to carry on chopping up. Well, right. I will while you're talking if you've got anything to say. But <laughs> well, hasn't she done well, well, well done. I'm looking forward to all of you trying it out. So make sure if you are trying it out, if you've made it before, post your pictures in the group or on this page, you're more than welcome to. In fact, even on the Sugar and Crumbs group, which is brilliant. If you've not made it before, seriously, give it a try. It's absolutely delicious. You'll never eat normal marshmallow again. You'll realise, put the two and two together, and it's also really, really, put two and two together, try them both, you'll never eat them again. Also, do it to your friends as well, and they'll tell you it's about the best, and they'll think you're amazing as well for doing it. So uh, definitely give it a go. You can cover it, you can put syrups through it, and um, store it up to three weeks, okay? I'm amazed if any of you can store it. Laura usually makes it for in the Christmas bags for people and um, party bags for people as well. Um, offers on the page today. So if you pop over to the website, sugarandcrumbs.co.uk, we've got Whipping It Up on offer and Whipping It Up shops because we had ice and sugars on a few weeks ago. We've got cocoa powders on offer and um, we've got the new two cake mixes on offer as well. So grab them while you can. Sugar paste, I can't put that on offer because we haven't got much left, we've sold out. The next delivery, I put white in stock because he's assured me I'll get the delivery for Monday, well Friday to dispatch on Monday. Um, but he, I haven't had confirmation about the colours, so as soon as I get confirmation about the colours, I'll put a dispatch date on for those as well. Remember, if you're ordering anything with a dish, dish back, dispatch date on, everything will go together. You won't get two deliveries, all right? So, Laura, thank you for being in the kitchen. Well done. Can I just say, somebody asked me how, you, how to make s'mores. S'mores, yeah. Yeah. So, all my kids do is they just take that piece, get two chocolate digestives, put that in the, in the centre and put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. Is that what they do, yeah? Yeah, they yeah. love it. I've got some digestives. Should we do it? If you want. Hey. But that, but that's what they do, and they absolutely love it. And they just do that themselves. <laughs> I don't get involved in that bit. And but that's then, on them. Okay. So yeah. So do that, and then I just want to say a big thank you for Terry. So Terry now goes on maternity leave. It's her last night in tonight. I'll get her to come around and give you a little wave, show you the baby bump for those of you who'd missed it. So it's her last time in for tonight. She is still working for us, working from home though, in the nice and warm oh. part. Yeah. <laughs> So anybody who wants to know, Terry's baby is due on the 26th of February, so she's going to take some time off and probably take a year out as well, but hopefully she's going to be working for us um, uh, from home quite a bit. So do you want to come and say goodbye to them yeah. all, Terry? Look at our beautiful girl, and look at this beautiful baby bump we've got. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> right, thanks, see you, bye. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully, um, yeah. I'll have something else to show you by the time when I come back. Are you going to tell them what you're having? Because you've told us, haven't you? Yeah, I think we said it on the last have one. Have we told them last um, one, did we? Yeah, baby girl, she's going to be called River. Aww. We've chosen a name. So. Yeah, cute, isn't it? <laughs> Excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're going to have a sugar and grums baby girl called River. How lovely is that? That seems to be quite a popular name at the moment, doesn't it? Is it? Yeah, I believe you're the second one I've heard this week. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, good, right. Thanks everyone for joining us. Harrison, do you want to run around and give everyone a wave? And that face. You've got half a Are second. You no, you've gone shy now. Be quick, because Terry's going to turn it off. Do you want to just shout bye bye? No. Right, okay. <laughs> so there you go. Good night from Harrison and Laura. Yeah, thank you very thank much. Thank you everyone for joining me tonight. Um, do appreciate you tuning in. Thank you. Yep, and we'll see you on Wednesday with Claire Corbett in the kitchen. Um, that's in the Make It Bake It group. 
and also we have a lovely new lady which is one of our very own crumblies. Denise Corrigan is going to come in the kitchen and show you how to make some lovely uh, melting your moments um, biscuits they are delicious we had them at the last social day and oh my god everybody went mad for them so I told her she wasn't allowed to share the recipe until she comes and does a live so she's going to be in the kitchen in the make it bake it group on Thursday so um, she's quite excited we will see you then Wednesday and Thursday cheerio bye, bye.